In this video, I'm going to try my best to take us through the steps of computer abstraction starting at the app level all the way down to the CPU hardware. Keep in mind different computers and processors have different hardware and architecture. Also different programming languages and environments can also have some different steps like the Java Virtual Machine. My example is based on a 64-bit Windows application, which means we are using a 64-bit CPU instruction set. But more or less, this shouldn't be too far off from what most computers are doing and hopefully this helps us get a better understanding of what is actually going on. We'll start at top at the application level. Using Visual C++, I created a Windows app that displays two numbers and when you click the swap button, the two numbers swap. Easy, right? Remember, the higher the abstraction level, the easier it generally is. And it's much easier to click on a button to swap two numbers than it is to code it. So let's move down to the programming level. Below the application level, we have the C++ that swaps the A and B variables. There's a lot more code than I'm showing you including the visual component, but to avoid complicating things, we're going to focus on what is happening with the swap function. On the right we have the traditional swapping by value with a temporary variable. However, this won't work with the function since we can't return two values in a function. On the left I am swapping by reference, which makes use of pointers to point to a memory location. As you can see in the diagram, we just change which memory address the pointer is pointing to. We will look further into memory addresses at the low language level and at the hardware level. So once we compile our C++, it will generate assembly language code which moves us down to the next level. Let's take a look at swapping variables with the low level language of assembly x86. The big ideas that relate to our swapping function in C++ is we are moving data from one memory location on the stack in RAM to registers in the CPU. Anytime you see the square brackets in assembly, that is like our pointers and they are referring to a memory address. Also notice the C++ comparison on the right. Assembly takes a lot more lines of code to accomplish the same goal. At the top, I'm going to highlight some important concepts and talk about the move opcode we are seeing in assembly. In this example, we are taking the memory address of variable A and copying that into a register so we can save it and swap it with variable B later. The last thing I will mention is in assembly, you cannot directly move memory from one place in RAM to another place in RAM. We will find out why when we get to the hardware level. Finally, once our swap is assembled, it will be converted into machine code. So let's move down another level into machine code. Students often ask me when their code becomes binary. And although technically it always is binary at the root level, machine code is really where binary and coding meet. In the diagram below, you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of machine code and assembly language. Notice how each command is a one-to-one -one ratio. The difference is assembly language was created to be a human-friendly version where you have some operations that make more sense than looking at binary or hexadecimal. Machine code also has the same format with the opcode on the left and the operands to the right. Now we are ready to finalize this variable swap application by executing it and sending it down to the next abstraction level. Now we are at the object code and linker level. In the process of creating an executable file, the machine code is grouped and organized into several modules and libraries which are called objects. The object code is still machine code and all the objects will be combined into a single executable file by the linker which also regulates memory space for each object. Once this is complete, we now have an executable application. Finally, we get to the compiled executable file. The compiler's job is over. I want to clarify that once you have a working application on your computer, the abstraction process no longer goes through the programming language, assembly language, or machine code. Once the app has been compiled, it has taken care of all of those steps. You are running the application based on the executable file, which is now ready to pass instructions to the CPU. This is handled by the next step, which is known as the loader. The job of the loader is to prepare the executable file by loading it into memory called RAM. This includes allocating memory space for data and instructions. Take a look at the diagram and you'll notice each instruction is made up of the opcode followed by the operands in the next slot below. The loader will allocate data memory in RAM for variables such as our A and B variables that we are swapping. Once the executable file is loaded, it is up to the CPU and hardware to make it all happen. 
I'm going to do my best to explain how the variable swap app is handled in the CPU, but this will be very simplified. Notice in the RAM we have our variables A and B including the pointers and the temp variable. Also in RAM we have our instructions, however I wrote them in assembly to make it easier to understand. In reality, this is all binary. All the instructions and data move between RAM and the CPU through buses. The address bus handles memory address requests from the CPU to RAM. Notice how the address bus only moves in one direction. The control bus will usually pass opcode instructions and the data bus will transfer variables and the operands back and forth whenever the instructions request data. So let's do an example of swapping two variables by value instead of by pointers. We begin by moving the contents of variable A into the R1 register. Now we move the value of R1 into the address of variable T. This took two steps because we cannot directly move RAM memory to RAM memory. The physical hardware cannot do that and that is why in assembly language we could not move memory to memory. Next we move variable B into R2 and then move register 2 into variable A. We follow this by moving variable T into register 3 and then R3 back into B. This will complete our swapping of variables through value. That was a look at the hardware level, but let's break down the hardware abstraction levels a little more to get the complete picture. So let's head further down the computer abstraction ladder. At the instruction architecture level, we execute operation commands and we work with registers and apply those operations. As programmers, we still have control on how this is executed at the instruction architecture level. But how the data and instructions move around is something we have no control over and this is called the microarchitecture level. Here the CPU will use available registers and flags based on its own particular design. Instructions are calculated inside the arithmetic and logic unit which is where we have logic gates. This is where conditionals and other operations are actually carried out on the binary level. Logic gates are composed of many different types such as the AND logic gate which requires two true inputs in order to get a true result from these inputs. These often turn boolean flags on and off which will aid the CPU in performing future instructions based on those conditions. One level below the logic gates we have transistors which feed into the logic gates. Each transistor is either on or off, allowing the passage of electrons or not. This is where the binary 1 or 0 come from. There are millions of transistors inside of a CPU, but when placed together with logic gates, they create everything amazing that a computer can do. Finally, the reason we have computers at all comes down to physics. Electrons have a negative charge and when near other negative electrons, they repel and move towards a positive charge. Computers are essentially taking a very simple physics law and putting millions of these electrons and transistors together to create logic and applications. That is a complete walk through the computer abstraction levels using a window swapping variable app as an example. Throughout many steps, I gave simple summaries, but there is so much more to learn in each step. If you were curious about any of the steps, I encourage you to keep learning more. The computer abstraction process is one of the most amazing engineering feats in all of human history.